Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. A quick shout out to my new or updated patrons, Antonio, Mark, Brad, and Parmod. Thank you very much for choosing to support the channel. Much has been made about the advertising during the Super Bowl, specifically for electric vehicles. The good news is almost all ads for vehicles were electric, not traditional ice, which is great to see, and in my opinion, all that really matters. And yes, we know that these other companies spending $7 million plus on these ad spots is going to indirectly benefit Tesla as the Google search volume will show. There was a slight increase in Tesla searches while these other electric vehicle ads ran. And today the media is highlighting one in particular, Polestar, because in the ad it took a shot at Elon being distracted for trying to conquer Mars, saying how Polestar is not doing anything to distract from making EVs. Obviously these companies are going to take swings at the leader and they wanna get people talking and mission accomplished in this case. However, just to remind people, including the general public, Tesla is not focused on conquering Mars. That is SpaceX, a separate entity from Tesla. Yes, the same leader, different companies. The last thing I'll say about it is advertising is generally for long-term brand equity. In my opinion, the only company that is guaranteed to be around in the future when it comes to producing electric vehicles is Tesla. Everybody else is just fighting to remain relevant and alive, so we'll see how it shakes out. I don't think it will be dependent upon the advertising success or failure. It's simply going to come down to who can produce and sell electric vehicles and who can do so profitably. So far, Tesla is the only company that's proven they can do it successfully at scale. This image of the Tesla Semi was shared by Alex Ding on Twitter, the best view of the frunk that I have seen. Just to throw some cold water on this real quick, there was a lot of news over the weekend that Tesla's next gigafactory might be in Liaoning province in Northeast China. There was a document posted by the Liaoning government on their WeChat account, and from the translation, combined with the urban renewal of the civilian area, open up the space for industrial development, lay the foundation for the landing of a major new energy vehicle project such as Tesla. All this is, so far, is a government publicly wooing Tesla to open up shop in its province. So is this possible? Yes. Is it likely? I would lean toward no. Either way, just a reminder, Elon told us we should know for sure about Tesla's next Gigafactory toward the end of 2022. And Liaoning is about an 18 hour drive from Shanghai. Awesome reminder here from Alex, while everybody talks about Giga Berlin, everybody forgets that Tesla automation in Germany has finished construction. What is Tesla automation? This used to be called Tesla Groman, and I did a video on this very topic. So if you missed it, go ahead and check that out above. The TLDW is this is the company that focuses on precision manufacturing and engineering. Basically the company that's going to help Tesla build the machine that builds the machine. So this brings us into the 4680 leak from the weekend. Now, you probably know 4680s are one of the most important developments happening at Tesla. Yes, in 2022, Tesla has said they will not be battery cell constrained. Right now, it is still chip supply constraints. However, they did say in 2023, as the chip supply constraint eases, it'll shift back to a battery cell constraint limitation. So it's very important we spend a few minutes looking at this leak to figure out what we can learn. Full disclosure, this is a leak. So one, we need to assume here that this is real, which we are going to do. And two, I did consider sharing it or not. However, after looking through it, I really don't think there's anything that would harm Tesla's position with this data that we're pulling from this chart. So I think it's okay that we go through it. On the Tesla Motors Club forum, the user said, sorry for the poor quality, but it represents 4680 battery production in Fremont on January 22nd, 2022. Green represents good batteries and red is for rejects. As you can see on that day, they had 14 machines running and produced 92% good batteries, including the 82% bad batteries from machine 212, which I believe was being used that day to train folks from Texas and who will be producing them there in the future. I was also informed that when this production chart was shared with me a few days ago, there were over 1 million batteries sitting in a warehouse somewhere waiting to become part of the Model Y structural battery pack being produced in Texas. So here we have the chart itself, and yes, it's not overly easy to see, but I'll try to make it as clear as possible. This is a yield chart for January 22nd. Basically, the green is good cells and the red is bad cells. Now, there is no actual throughput given on this chart. However, we can try to figure out a few things. And although, yes, you can see about 6,200 good cells here, and this says yield by day, we're not sure if this was one shift or two shifts, so there are some assumptions that need to be made. 
First thing you need to know, this chart is just one step of the 4680 process. This step is the winding phase, basically where you create the jelly roll by taking the anode and the cathode and the separators and you roll it up. Before this step, there are about six other steps, and after the winding, there are about another 12 steps. So this top left section is the yield for this run of all of the combined different winding stations. The bottom left is the yield from each of the winding stations. So if you take a look, station 104 compared to say station 206. A lot of people were reading this and saying, okay, station 104 produced 81 good cells, which was a 79% yield compared to station 206 producing 926 cells, which was a 96% yield. So what's going on here? Ultimately, remember, this is coming from Cato Road. So this is a test pilot facility. The purpose of this facility is to implement new solutions and to continually iterate on the process. So here we have 14 different winding stations where Tesla is presumably trying different solutions for this winding phase. And yes, there are some stations that are left out as there's a gap going from 104 to 107 and then also 209 and some others are left out as well. And remember, we were told that station 212 was basically an example run at Giga Austin to teach some of the engineers how this stage works. So the point here in this bottom left is that Tesla is presumably trying different things at each station, which is obviously going to yield different results. And if you look at 103 and 104 in particular, where they had a higher percentage of red or defective cells, we can assume that Tesla is trying a new iteration here. And when you try new things, typically it's going to take some tweaking to ultimately get it right. However, this gets to one of the fundamental reasons Tesla is so far ahead and will continue to be so because of its agile hardware manufacturing, meaning that Tesla engineers have the ability and the green light to change things on the fly to try to find new solutions to improve things without having to go through long approval processes. And then on the right, you have the defect Pareto deep dive. Remember Pareto is that principle that 80% of the outcomes are reliant upon 20% of the input, resulting in an asymmetry between the input and the outputs. So this shows Tesla where the problems are coming from. The number one issue was with the flag folding in of the cathode, resulting in about 93 defective cells. And shout out to Alex from the XPod for highlighting this line right here, the vision flag fold for the anode, where Tesla might be using some form of AI to complete this process. But rather than getting further into the weeds, I wanna zoom out and start to piece together what this actually means for Tesla's progress. So Alex also told us if you try to extrapolate this run, you would take about a two cell per minute average times 24 different stations, times 60 minutes per hour, times 24 hours in a day, times 365 days a year, meaning at full capacity, Tesla would be making about 25 million cells per year. But keep in mind, this is a very rough average with a lot of assumptions. So remember, we have a rumor that Tesla has about a million cells stockpiled at a warehouse. Now, if we look at this photo, we have the old 2170s versus the new 4680s. This is from Monroe Live. Previously, there were about 4,416 2170 cells in a Tesla battery pack. Now, once again, this is based on some assumptions. We would need about 960 4680 cells for the new structural battery pack. However, this would take us from a prior 74 kilowatt hour pack to a 130 kilowatt hour pack, which Tesla probably does not need that much in one pack. So presumably we would actually need a little bit less than 960 of the 4680 cells in the new pack. It could be anywhere from 600 to 960. So let's just split the difference and go with about 750 4680 cells for the new structural pack. Once again though, to confirm that 960 figure, this was from Tesla's battery day. And yes, if you actually count the cells from this infographic shared on the screen, this does yield 960 cells per pack. Once again though, this might be high when it comes to actual kilowatt hours needed per pack, unless Tesla is going to offer some sort of advanced Model Y like a Plaid version. And also from Monroe, since we're here, just remember the amount of steel that Tesla will need is also around 30 to 40 times less with the new 4680 form factor alone. So looking at the numbers, if we assume there will be 750 4680 cells per structural pack, under that assumption, having 1 million cells, if that rumor is true that Tesla has somewhere in a warehouse, that would only be enough for 1,333 structural packs. Not very many. 
Now, if we go with the higher end of Tesla's theoretical potential battery cell run rate per year, that would be the 25 million figure divided by 750 is enough for about 33,333 structural packs. And just to be clear, Tesla did say that they are going to start deliveries of 4680 structural packs out of Giga Austin. So they have to be confident that they have enough supply to meet the demand. Now, yes, also long-term, some of the supply will be LFP cells, presumably for the lower range Tesla vehicles. However, at this point, we're not really sure how Tesla's ultimately going to handle the battery supply coming out of Giga Austin. And when it comes to suppliers, we've been told that Panasonic is going to be working on the 4680 form factor, but they've been talking a lot about that at their Japan facility. However, not much information has been given about what Panasonic is doing with 4680s at Giga Nevada. You would assume that they've been working on this for some time, but we don't know for sure. And to contextualize the yield rate, remember, once again, this is test line. So the yield actually could be lower than what Tesla could do with its best iterations that it has so far. With that said though, even 92% is reasonable. Now I'm not a battery expert from the things that I have read. Anything 95% and above would be considered good for the industry. So once again, if our assumptions that Tesla was trying different things at some of these winding stations proves to be correct, their actual yield rate for this phase could be higher than 90%. 92%. And I think one of the most important discussions around this topic is how Tesla will handle the rollout. Based on everything we know, I personally don't think Tesla is going to change anything for the consumer. I think they're just going to implement these 4680s in the structural pack and nothing will change right away. I think if Tesla was going to implement a Model Y Plaid, they would have made the announcement already for people placing orders, especially if they're gonna start delivering these sometime next month. I believe Tesla just wants to keep things simple, not change anything with the consumer. Remember, most of this can be software limited, so they can put the new 4680s and the structural pack in and then configure the software so that the output, meaning the range, the performance, and the statistics are gonna be the same as the 2170 pack. Because you have to remember, most of the general public doesn't know what a 4680 is. It's really just this small minority of us in the online community, us Tesla nerds, that actually understand the 4680s and what's going on. Now, down the line, once 4680s are scaled, I do think there's a chance Tesla would implement a Mono Y Plaid or a Performance Plus, something like that, but I do not see anything like that in the near future. The main reason, just to keep things simple and the statistics for the current Model Y are already good enough. That way Tesla will benefit from any cost reductions or savings from the 4680s and structural pack. And the last thing, remember, this is just one phase of about maybe 18 different steps for the 4680. So while this data is definitely encouraging, there are other parts of the process that we don't have any insight as to how they're going. But the main takeaway is that Tesla being ready to deliver cars with 4680s and structural packs should give us enough confidence that they have the supply coming from somewhere to ramp up Giga Austin. Moving on, Xpeng opened up a pop-up store right in front of a Tesla showroom here in China. So make of it what you will, but like I said, people are going to take shots at Tesla, use Tesla, do whatever they can to try to pull some of the attention and demand away from Tesla. We just have to expect this. We got the CPCA data for Tesla in Shanghai for the month of January. Tesla China sold 59,845 vehicles in January, and of that figure, 40,499 were exports. Loading up the data into the chart, you can see that January of this year over January of last year is a 286% increase. And looking at the totals, this was the second best month ever out of Giga Shanghai as the only month to beat it was December of last year. Speaking of, there was yet another rumor that these BYD Blade batteries were going to be in Tesla vehicles as soon as quarter two. And later the main post was deleted, but they said it wasn't because the info was bad, it was because BYD wanted to make the announcement on its own. We've honestly seen this rumor maybe five plus times over the last few months, so I'm personally not going to read into it until I see it come from BYD or Tesla themselves. This right here is a map of Giga Berlin, and we need to discuss something that Troy Teslike had pointed out. Right now, too many people are assuming that Giga Berlin can make up to 2 million vehicles per year. That is just factually incorrect. At the moment, you can see these four different quadrants or areas for new buildings. Currently, we have Giga Berlin one building expecting to produce up to 500,000 units per year. Tesla has clarified that another one of these plots would be for drive units and battery cells, so that uses up one. So that would leave two potential plots for future buildings that could maybe be used for vehicle production. If we assume that 500,000 
600,000 unit per year rate, that could mean they would have three plots or up to 1.5 million vehicles produced per year. However, obviously that would require two more factories to be built. So right now at its current iteration, Tesla is only capable of producing 500,000 units per year from Giga Berlin with possible room for expansion. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.